specific specialists. Today, we see each other at a lecture presentation of the participants uh, of uh, our coalition, which uh, our lecturers Miriam Nimeir and Natalia Kozub uh, did as part of our collaboration, Potential and Barriers for Circular Construction in Ukraine. I would like to start with a brief presentation, then you will have uh, an opportunity to ask a question and to participate in the discussion, so welcome. We will be happy to have your feedback. Yes, thank you, Marco. Uh, let me introduce uh, today's speakers to you. Uh, indeed, uh, very welcome to this uh, already the 11th lecture that we are uh, having. All the lectures uh, are indeed on the YouTube channel that you can uh, look afterwards. Uh, and I also, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, urge you to go to our website, which is renewed and uh, extremely lively and is showing all the projects. And a lot of the outcomes of our projects are being discussed indeed in these lectures, but are now also uh, on the website itself. So also today's uh, findings you can read uh, later and, and see what it is all about. Uh, most of the times is in two languages, Ukrainian and English. Uh, so today's uh, lecture is about uh, the potentials and the barriers of circular construction in Ukraine. Uh, needless to say how important it is uh, to think about uh, circular economies and circular reconstruction uh, in general, but especially in circumstances like this, when uh, there is a scarcity of resources and a scarcity of, uh, of energy means in, in production. Um, so these findings, uh, I, I think we will all need very much. And uh, I am uh, very excited actually to, to have this lecture tonight. Uh, it is being conducted by Miriam Niemeyer who is a founding partner of the Helsinki Zurich office and working in the fields of architecture, urban design and urban planning. And she has an, a, a specific expertise in uh, urban renewal and revitalization. Her research deals indeed with circularity, housing, housing cooperatives and agglomerations. Uh, she lectures as the Institute for Urban Landscape in Zurich uh, has several other uh, uh, professorships and uh, teaching uh, jobs in, in several universities and places um, and has been teaching for years, uh, very relevant here of course, in the Ken Action School for Urban Studies in Kiev uh, already since 2015. Uh, in, in various programs there, but also in the curation of the educational program called Homes for Tomorrow. So has extensive uh, experience in, in Ukraine. Uh, Natasha Kozup uh, is an architect and urban planner. She's currently an active member of the Rusfoyt urban planning team for Mariupol. And uh, her main focus is on landscape, urbanism, housing and urban planning. She graduated from the Kharkiv School of Architecture and since 2016 is also an active member of the Kharkiv NGO The Other Way. They are mostly known by their project, the Green Network of Kharkiv. So the floor is yours, please. Welcome everyone at our lecture. The day after tomorrow will mark the year uh, when the full-fledged invasion of Russia into Ukraine started. And it makes us think about all the damages and casualties that resulted from the hostilities. I would like to voice my condolences to all our compatriots who uh, experience the casualties and the damages and uh, my e extreme gratitude to everyone who works uh, to rebuild Ukraine and who gives us hope for victory. Today we 
give you a lecture about recovery. And um, one of the Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians I talked to uh, gave me the following phrase, the best revenge for the Russians for all the damages they uh, caused us will be to recover Ukraine using the very debris uh, that they uh, have turned our cities into. And this will be the slogan for our today's lecture. Um, please. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, can you see the slides? No, Natasha, you have to share. <laughs> so there was a maybe we can okay great here is the the quote natasha was just um quoting and to this i have nothing to add and uh, thank you very much for these uh, very well chosen words and as a long friend of ukraine and everybody who is in relation to europe to Ukraine, I of course also want um, to um, to um, send my biggest uh, condolences to the situations. Yes, and with this in mind, we decided also to um, to have a lecture today and not to to skip it because we think it's important to think about the future. As already said, our lecture is uh, dealing uh, will deal uh, with the topic circular construction uh, in Ukraine, especially, of course, reconstruction. And um, this uh, work was uh, done in uh, the context of a research project, uh, which we conducted um, for the new European Bauhaus uh, Foundation together, uh, Natasha and me. And we finished it in, uh, in December last year. And we are very happy to share um, yeah, our findings with you today. Uh, next slide. OK, um, when we talk about circularity, of course, um, first of all, we have to be clear about what it means, actually. And a circular construction means to develop, use, and reuse um, materials, uh, building, site, and any kind of infrastructure, build infrastructure, without uh, unnecessarily exploiting natural resources or polluting the environment or damaging ecosystems. So it means that um, circular con construction is a way to build in an economically sound uh, way, and it uh, should contribute to the well-being of people, animals, nature, and the earth. Next slide. Yeah, OK. So why, why did we um, work on this topic? And why was this topic developed uh, together with the new European Bauhaus? As everybody knows, um, now we have uh, set the date of September 2000. 22 because that was the last uh, that was the high intense phase of our research work already at that time we had uh, over 15000 buildings destroyed high rise buildings yeah you see the numbers like a very very high amount of numbers of houses and educational institutions which were damaged uh, due to the war so it's clear that the need for new construction and reconstruction is very huge in the country now and even bigger after this war has stopped. And so for us, it's very important to, to think about how we could reconstruct in a um, sustainable and as carbon neutral as possible. And um, as we know, Ukraine has already taken course into the green recovery. Um, you can see that in, in, the, in the many uh, political um, uh, meetings which were, were happening in the last month. But of course, um, it is uh, it's important to continue that path. Next slide. And another thing that's why we should, as architects and planners, think about uh, circular construction is the reason that um, almost half of the total CO2 emissions of a building arise during the construction process. And um, everybody also know that the construction industry's contribution to global warming is um, 
are very, very high. And that's, that's why the immediate decarbonization is uh, very necessary. And um, we have to think uh, when we talk about this, we should um, think about the planning as well as the construction process. Next slide. Um, of course, when we talk about uh, circular construction in Ukraine, we have to look um, on the legal framework, which is existing in the country. And we have uh, looked into that and uh, we found that there is uh, since 2017 already some attempts um, on waste management in the country. Waste management is very close, of course, to um, also uh, construction waste. Um, so it's not only about domestic waste, but it's also about um, other kinds of waste or all kinds of wastes. And um, since 2017, we have uh, had uh, a series of um, laws. Uh, so the national strategy on waste management and the national plan on waste management waste management. And um, also in 2020, the first time was a law introduced providing construction products to the market. So uh, with that, there was a um, goal to, to set uh, requirements for sustainable use of natural resources in the sector. And also um, you, um, thinking or in, um, introducing the recycling and um, also a design for long, 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 uh, long activity. In um, 2022, after uh, you can you can skip, it's okay. Or maybe we stay here. Um, <laughs> so um, also very important is that 2021 over 500 national state um, standards, uh, please back, uh, which are identical to the U EU standards um, were introduced in the country. So these are important steps um, to um, align uh, construction processes with the um, EU procedures. And um, as we know, there is um, um, and also in actually in the beginning of this year, um, Ukraine um, um, will uh, was or, um, it will implement the EU regulation number um, 304, which is about the um, further um, harmonization of um, construction project products. Um, now next slide, please. Um, since the beginning of the war, um, in uh, February 2022, um, there was a series of other. Um, there were a series of other, um, um, yeah, um, legal um, things um, going on. So um, to make it short, important is that um, they now there is you Ukraine is in um, on the way to align. Um, the, um, the, the national regulations and the framework to be um, to be um, more sustainable and more um, circular. Still, we have to say that there is, um, and um, we. Um, sorry now, <laughs> and we have, um, and we have a. Um, and there is um, a need for a national strategy for circularity and a need to um, define control mechanisms for circular construction. Um, also important is that um, to make this happen, we need to um, establish um, functional and supported, uh, supportive legislative uh, framework so that um, the investors, like all relevant um, stakeholders can work together, like investors, developers, producers of building materials, but also, of course, municipalities. Okay, next slide. Mm. Me next, right, Miriam? Yes. Я продовжу про відходи руйнації. I will continue with the uh, demolition waste. Everyone knows 
that the amount of ruination is uh, horrible in Ukraine. And from the very beginning of the uh, invasion, uh, de demolition, demolition uh, was documented in Ukraine. And we can today assess the demolition uh, due to the efforts of initiatives who are uh, digitalizing the demolition with the help of a satellite uh, imaging. Of course, this provides very rough data. This is preliminary data, but it gives enough data to uh, take strategic decisions about the places with the most, the, the major amount of um, demolition waste and where to place the plants processing demolition waste. To uh, understand uh, what happens in specific municipalities, we have polled uh, Ukrainian municipalities and it turned out that um, private housing for one family is more or less okay uh, because the property owners are uh, demolishing their uh, damaged houses themselves and sorting out the materials which can be reused. But um, there is a huge challenge concerning uh, high-rise buildings because all the um, costs for uh, deconstruction and uh, recycling and reuse of the uh, materials obtained from damaged buildings uh, is uh, lies with the municipalities uh, who are not prepared for this scale of ru uh, ruination and demolition. Before the war, uh, not many houses were demolished in Ukraine, and there are very few companies that uh, deal in uh, reuse and recycle of the demolition waste. Uh, municipal companies and actually private companies as well have uh, little equipment required for um, uh, for uh, dealing with demolished concrete buildings and they lack uh, capacity, they lack uh, people, uh, there is high time pressure um, and municipalities in general try to, um, to sort out all the demolition waste as soon as possible to uh, resume the normal pattern of lives. And so very little attention due to this time pressure is paid to sorting out the materials and reusing them. And so mostly such debris uh, uh, find them itself in the general use landfills. But these demolition waste is rather different from uh, common demolition waste uh, because mostly this waste is uh, similar to the one uh, generated by acts of elements like tsunami, earthquakes, etc. And uh, at the same time, uh, such houses can contain uh, military waste, unexploded missiles, and so they are even more dangerous in terms of waste. The challenge of treating such hazardous waste is that it is really very hazardous, um, especially um, in terms of con uh, content of uh, hazardous uh, components. Asbestos is the case, which uh, is the most commonly used material for roofs and insulation. Um, asbestos is a, a very uh, dangerous uh, cancer-provoking agent. Uh, also, we have uh, a lot of uh, toxic waste contained in uh, paints. Uh, also, um, the electric and electronic equipment uh, that gets to the general use landfill uh, is rather toxic. Uh, in, uh, to this, we must add uh, batteries and accumulators, medicines, um, and all other kind of waste that require uh, specialized uh, recycling. And when it gets to the general use landfill, it turns into the time bomb because in time, 
all the toxic waste will uh, will pollute the soil, the groundwater and air, and it will uh, bring close to the catastrophe, the ecological catastrophe we are facing at present. So rather, uh, we believe that such hazardous wastes must be sorted sometimes manually with the uh, use of protective, special protective equipment, and they must be stored at the specialized landfills uh, before they could be disposed of or reused. Um, the challenge is that uh, Ukraine doesn't have many um, recycling uh, companies and uh, certain types of toxic wastes um, are not dealt with by any kind of company and uh, there is no relevant legislation. If we have a look at the normal demolition of waste, um, which doesn't include medicines, uh, electronic waste, etc., mostly such demolition of waste will include uh, concrete and uh, masonry, uh, natural mineral materials. At present, Ukraine has very few municipal or private companies uh, which have at least some kind of uh, processing for these type of materials, processing equipment. And uh, uh, such equipment is present only in big cities. At the same time, such uh, processed uh, masonry and uh, concrete uh, are enjoy rather high demand because they are cheaper than uh, the primary source uh, um, primary source um, aggregates and uh, so they enjoy rather high demand. If we have a look at the situation with uh, construction waste in other countries, mostly Europe um, will uh, process uh, its construction waste and then use the processed um, materials, 99% of them, uh, to build roads. Also, there is a technology which uh, carbonates the processed um, concrete, and this uh, creates carbon negative concrete. Um, and this innovative product has a big potential to reduce uh, CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. Uh, liquid CO2 is what we need for that, and it can be obtained as a byproduct, for instance, from biofuel uh, manufacturing. Uh, because Ukraine um, has a very well developed agricultural sector and in future biofuel uh, produced uh, or our agricultural waste can be rather promising um, and also taking into account that the companies uh, manufacturers of biofuel could be um, interested in reducing their co2 wastes it can be rather a potentially promising type of technology uh, also, um, the recycled um, concrete can be used for uh, new con in, in new construction, but there are a lot of uh, buts here, uh, because uh, to substitute primary uh, con uh, concrete with recycled concrete, um, we need to add uh, a lot of cement and this is the worst material in terms of CO2. So that is why uh, recycled concrete should be uh, used uh, as a non-structural material, um, though uh, there is some research uh, dealing with using the recycled concrete in structural elements. One of the cutting edge technologies uh, is uh, provided by the Netherlands. It's called Smart Crusher. And this innovation um, uh, focuses on uh, on sorting the uh, concrete into fractions 
um, sand, concrete, uh, cement, and it uses much less resources and provides much fewer uh, um, emissions uh, in comparison with the rest. Uh, but unfortunately, this is just a pilot uh, project, and uh, I was uh, we were communicating with the um, uh, with the representatives of this project, and I would really love to see this uh, established in Ukraine. Uh, reuse of, con uh, of concrete is very promising, uh, especially the reuse of concrete panels. Uh, East Germany shows that uh, reuse of concrete panels, uh, like slabs and uh, structural walls, um, is possible in private housing and uh, actually it makes uh, the construction of private housing cheaper because high-rise uh, buildings, residential buildings, uh, provide uh, modular concrete panels. Uh, I believe that uh, such panels can be used for constructing a new uh, uh, high-rise uh, panel uh, residential buildings. and. The best potential is provided by the walls and the slabs, as I said, because uh, they were uh, internal walls and slabs, because they were not affected by the elements. And um, they can be used either uh, as they are, or they could be cut uh, to measure and used to uh, build the foundations in uh, private fa single family houses, for instance. Uh, reuse of steel structural components uh, also is very promising in Ukraine. In Ukraine, mostly industrial buildings uh, have uh, bearing steel structures. And international experience gives us a lot of examples of using reuse of such uh, uh, steel uh, components. In Ukraine, we see just one of uh, such projects, uh, Drozdoven Partners, uh, salon uh, of BMW brand uh, built in Kharkiv. So this is possible, but unfortunately not yet a widespread technology. Uh, reuse of bricks is nothing new for Ukraine, especially for small private housing. There are quite a lot of examples of using um, old brick in big projects. For instance, uh, Podol Theater in Kiev or the facade of Prom Prelate uh, factory in Ivano Frankivsk, a multifunctional uh, building in Chernyshevsky Street in Kharkiv. In Copenhagen, we have a very exciting building. Uh, constructed of not individual bricks, but uh, blocks of bricks cut out from uh, old buildings uh, from the same area and then uh, making used in this new building. And uh, Roscoe is planning to work with this company uh, on a pilot project uh, in Ukraine. Uh, reuse of different materials, uh, including timber, tiles, um, um, glass, um, lino is absolutely possible, but it requires creative approach. And so far, Ukraine lacks this experience, but uh, we have a very promising international experience, uh, which can be upscaled and spread uh, among uh, Ukrainian architects it would be very useful. In general, we have concluded that the situation with uh, recycled or demolition waste is very difficult and urgent, and it requires urgent attention from the central government and international community. We believe that um, the most promising uh, thing here is to support municipalities uh, not to invite some big scale international uh, architects. And we also have to um, create online directories of, um, of such elements to be reused 
and uh, we need to establish sorting stations um, and the stations that can process um, uh, such materials for further reuse can create a lot of jobs. Unfortunately, reuse uh, uh, second-hand materials um, uh, give a bit bad rap in Ukraine now. They have bad image and we need to change that. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Um, yes, I uh, I will continue with um, after we heard about um, the the reuse um, or the, like how to de how, how we could deal with re recycling of materials. Now we will I will uh, focus on circular construction methods and also uh, looking at the natural resources um, which are available in Ukraine. So. We had a look on um, what kind of renewable building materials are have a high potential to, to be used for construction in the first place. And on the other hand, how is it um, looking when we look at the, uh, the availability? And we identified three um, interesting um, sources. On the one hand, uh, rice straw, then hemp and wood. Um, rice straw is very interesting and has a high potential because it's of course a renewable resource we just i just mentioned but it's also very um, very well suited for construction compared to normal uh, or standard straw because it has a tiny amount of nutrition in in the in the uh, yeah in the uh, resource it, it, and keeps insects and rodents away because of its um, tiny amount it is, as you can see, the darker um, the map is, um, it is mostly grown in the in the northern region. And um, today, actually, straw in general, I mean, we all know that Ukraine is a big, uh, the biggest uh, producer of, um, of um, uh, wheat and, and straw uh, in the world. So all, um, and it produces a lot of um, and actually um, uh, demolition or not, not waste, I mean, uh, waste, um, which is then um, downcycled or even burned. So there is a big potential by just um, using this um, side product of the agriculture to, to be used. And um, the same goes a little bit with hemp. Hemp is maybe a, um, a bit different because it's not um, per se a product which is grown in the country and is also um, only allowed in Ukraine to be um, to be uh, um, uh, harvested in um, when it is for technical reasons and uh, medical hemp is not, uh, for instance. And because of this, um, there is, of course, a strict control procedure behind and that makes the, the, um, the, the, uh, the business very difficult. And um, the great thing about hemp, um, that's why we have it here, is because it doesn't require any fertilizers and it's very fast growing and is not demanding on water. Um, the last um, material we looked at or we find uh, relevant in this um, context is wood. Um, again, here, the darker um, the green, the, the higher the, um, the coverage uh, in the country is. But in general, one can say that it is actually um, it is not um, very, um, there's not very much wood, uh, um, uh, wood uh, production in the country. And of course, um, lately, um, lots of wood is used, uh, or last winter or this winter, lots of use, uh, wood is used for, for heating and other reason. And um, so right now we can say it is limited resource in Ukraine. And um, the deficit um, of uh, forest coverage existed already um, before the war and it will become much bigger. Nevertheless, wood is a very important um, material uh, when, we when it comes to technical, um, um, technical aspects of construction. Next slide, please. When we look at the traditional building, um, 
uh, techniques, um, and this is actually not uh, something which is um, relevant for Ukraine. It's actually you can find these uh, building techniques all over the world. You, um, we, um, there is the Ukrainian country house called Mazanka, which is actually um, built by um, a wooden frame often, and then limestone, limestone or raw bricks and coated with clay. And this is a very uh, traditional uh, technique. Um, the special thing is that um, compared to other European or more Western, uh, Western, Western located uh, countries, actually um, it is still um, a technique which is um, used. And um, so there is a know-how um, people know how to do it. But um, on the other hand, since it's often or mostly done in rural and poor areas, the, um, let's say, the, the image of this, these kind of houses, they are um, aligned with poorness and old fashioned lifestyle at the moment and low technical standards. Next. Um, today, uh, in in many countries in the world, um, there is a, a big because we understand that we have to change our traditional or like the standards of construction which we had for the last uh, decades. There is um, ongoing research um, in in the field of how we can use um, um, stray and uh, stray or wood and um, other. Um, other materials, renewable materials um, for a circular construction method. The great thing about the straw clay wood um, prefabrication, what we see here, you can see elements which are prefabricated somewhere and then assembled on site, is that it has a very good insulation and it has um, like sound insulation, but also um, energy insulation. And um, if it's uh, combined with a clay cover, it has also a very good fire resistances up to um, 60 um, class uh, REI 60. So um, um, this um, technology has a big potential, but um, right now we have um, the situation that um, the um, that it's um, today only allowed to build up to two stories. And um, it is possible to build higher with a concrete frame in Ukraine, but it's, but it's not uh, so clear. And of course, there's not uh, so many um, producers, but there is uh, um, an amount of producers which are doing this already, which is of course um, a great potential. Um, okay, next slide, please. Here we see um, a couple of um, examples of stray wood um, pro, uh, projects realized in Ukraine. They are all, as you can see, uh, very small scale buildings because of the, uh, the limitations of, um, of the material itself. Next slide. This is now um, a case study uh, which we found in, in Switzerland. It's actually a case study which is relevant or interesting in many um, dimensions. On the one hand, in this project, um, it was, um, can you not move the mouse? Um, on the one hand, um, it, is, um, it is a light concrete structure, which is then um, filled with straw bales in, inside. And the, the windows are also in, filled inside. And um, the overall um, energy efficiency is um, is energy class A, um, which is of average, which is a very very high standard. Um, another very interesting um, aspect is that um, it was also built this project um, with an active involvement of residents uh, from the design phase to construction. That means that actually residents were the future residents were involved in self-building um, this project. And um, next to this, this is of course an um, interesting uh, social aspect to it. And um, 
the the very simple structure with these uh, with this balcony structure in in the front also um, which is a light structure um, um, offers a lot of um, big spaces for um, for the for the for the residents um, uh, private spaces okay um, next slide This is another project which is um, on the one hand um, dealing with the same principles, but um, the interesting part of it is um, it's also in Switzerland. Um, um, the, the interesting part of it that um, one aspect was to also uh, combine new technologies, new um, circular con uh, tech building technologies with the um, recycling of existing um, building components. Again, um, um, this is um, of course also a building which has in the end a high energy standard, and um, it is um, it was um, with the um, with the aim of um, also integrating existing uh, construction elements to the um, to the um, to the building. Um, it was possible to reduce um, an extreme amount of um, of embodied en energy. Um, also relevant is that um, it was also structural uh, structural elements were reused um, by um, with this building, which is as you can see on the right hand side is an extension of an existing building. So um, in the lower parts you see um, an industrial um, building. And um, the upper two stories are um, the uh, extension of the building. Um, and the walls, um, as you can say, uh, see, are made of straw panels with wooden frames. And um, the this um, because the walls are actually um, kind of um, designed um, to fit in the in the structure there was a easy way to uh, fit the um, recycled um, windows in it next slide um, here an example of um, of also these um, these panels um, use uh, but this time not made of straw but made of hemp um, maybe relevant is the same it is the same technology um, relevant is that although it's a very seldom technology there is already one or at least we found one producer in Ukraine which is already doing this and um, which shows that is that is a kind of a, is a trend and um, it can um, it can really also be a very interesting aspect for the country. Um, next slide. This is another um, case study, so showing how what we could what could be done when uh, hempcrete and um, or yeah in this in this uh, hemp could uh, become um, also relevant for other parts of the uh, construction of a building. Um, here you can see that um, they developed uh, in this project um, they developed a hemp clay stone, which is actually. Um, a, a product um, which was developed uh, for this product called natural beton, which was a mix, uh, which is a mix of hemp and lime. And uh, with these uh, new um, aggregates or new um, um, mixes of uh, of um, of products, um, you can uh, create a very interesting products which have a low energy demand and. Um, also provide very very good um, um, insulation, and as you can see, also that building has an energy efficiency class A, um, realized in Italy. Next slide. Engineered timber, of course, this is probably what everybody knows um, or everybody who is an architect or <laughs> close to architect knows probably about because it's a, it was is a very popular um, building material lately all over the world. Um, of course, also um, there are um, um, companies working with wood um, 
as we said before, or as I said before, there is um, not so much wood um, available in the country. So we see it not as a primary construction. We don't see a big potential for wood to be a primary construction material, what you can see here. And um, it is um, the reason probably um, why it is expensive is that it is not very much available in the country. And um, it, of course, um, when it is cross laminated, that is the word CLT, it, is, it makes the wood very, very um, stable and very, very um, strong, actually. Um, so it can uh, take um, yeah, um, statical functions. Next slide. Um, talking about statical functions, um, here is a um, project um, from the Netherlands. Um, also that way of construction you can find actually in many countries in, in, in Europe at the moment, um, which is based on uh, modules which are uh, prefabricated and then assembled on site. And these um, modules are all in itself very, um, very stable and uh, statically um, working as a, as a unit, which makes the whole building uh, very, um, very strong. And um, great is, of course, that um, the way it is, uh, this building is um, um, assembled and makes disassembly in the later phase very, very simple because the, these modules can be um, reassembled um, in another spot, for instance. Um, next slide. Of course, concrete is still a very important uh, building material because it offers the best um, statical functions for construction. And that's why um, we are not saying, we don't want to say that concrete is, uh, is not the right material because it has a, a high positive um, carbon footprint. But um, it should, when it is used, it should be used in a very minimal, in a very, um, let's say, reduced to the maximum um, way in, uh, in the building. What we see here on the right-hand side is, um, is a kind of a, um, a model, let's say, um, an ideal model of, a, of, a, of, a, of the use of concrete um, in a building. Uh, providing a skeleton, I think um, architects uh, know it, which um, is a load bearing structure, a primary uh, stru uh, a structure, which could be then uh, filled up with any kind of secondary structure. These kind of, um, let's say, um, separation in uh, primary and secondary uh, structures um, allow actually to um, allow for a maximum of ad adaptability in the long term. And also because of this uh, possibility to adapt the building to different functions in the long term, it also allows a long for long levity. Uh, long levity. Um, of course, um, this means that floor heights and flow, uh, floor, uh, floor loads should allow for a function in the future. And um, of course, if this would be also then done in a, um, in a way that uh, prefabricated elements would be assembled um, to, be, uh, to become a primary structure, then it would be even more uh, flexible and adaptable in, um, in the long term. And as I said, of course, these kind of structures, and there's also a lot of research going on in many, many projects in, uh, in, in countries, um, kind of the, the goal would be to minimize the, the use of concrete. And for this, um, it is very relevant to work together with construction engineers who can actually give, provide a feedback during the design process so that um, the, um, the material can be reduced to a maximum. Next slide. This project is, um, is again, an, you can say an ideal model um, for um, these 
thinking of primary and secondary structures is the um, is um, in Switzerland again, and um, it's is the EMPA, uh, the nest building by EMPA, which has, as you can see here, a primary structure in which um, modules are um, put and can be can be um, put. Very important is that uh, when we talk about um, these modules, um, that also these modules are um, done in a way that they can be reassembled and disassembled in a way. So it's not only about this primary and secondary structures, but also the secondary structure in itself and everything um, which makes it um, hold together is actually um, designed so that every piece can be um, put away. Um, this project is kind of it's an R&D project, a research and design project in close collaboration with universities, um, especially the ETH in Zurich. And um, here, um, so it's not like um, a building which uh, you can take as a reference, but it provides a lot of learnings. And this is maybe relevant um, to, to quote here that um, the whole um, part of circular, circular construction is a big field of um, development. So almost every month there is new um, findings, new projects coming up because um, the world has seen and has uh, understood that uh, we have to change the way we build today. Or we have done it in the past. Next slide. This is a project um, pretty new in 2022, um, where the, um, the architects were um, um, having the, um, the big, um, they wanted to reduce um, the maximum, uh, the, the, the use of metal, for instance, as a primary structure to the maximum. And we're working very close together with uh, construction engineers. That's why they could, uh, you can see it on the left hand side, they could actually develop a structure um, with a, um, 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 a, um, a hard uh, concrete a concrete structure in the middle with the um, elevators and the stairs and the rest around this is actually just a metal cast which is filled up with um, with um, concrete uh, with with wood for instance and this is of course a very very um, interesting um, also very interesting product uh, or project to to see um, next slide, please. So um, this brings me uh, to the conclusions. Um, the rye straw and the hemp, they have um, a big uh, potential for Ukraine because um, Ukraine is a big agricultural producer and they are very fast growing crops. Today, um, a lot of... Um, product or like side products or rest material is burned or downcycled. So it is actually waste which can be used for construction. Um, one way of doing this is to, um, to use it for prefabricated panels. And uh, to do these panels is not a very complex um, uh, thing. It requires um, not very much equipment and can be also done, as I explained on this one uh, project, it can be e even uh, done by do-it-yourself builders if the panels and uh, work um, are done in a good way. It is a very good insulation material and um, um, it is um, still, the sector is very small in Ukraine and there is a little expertise. Wood, as I said, is of course a great um, carbon negative alternative, but it has a limited, um, uh, li there's a limited availability and a high price in the country. And um, um, concrete um, is on the one hand, uh, the industry is very well established in Ukraine. There is a high expertise in prefabrication uh, or prefabricated construction. The challenge uh, we, we see here is the prefabric, uh, prefabricated concrete elements today are often outdated. So there is a need to develop new um, kind of to, to, to shift this technology of prefabrication in a different, um, in a different direction. Next. 
Next slide. Your turn, Natasha. Я продовжу про реновацію будівель. Серед прихильників кругового підходу поширена думка, що взагалі в наступні роки не треба будувати нічого нового. Людство має зосередитися на повторному використанні та адаптації вже існуючих будівель. So there is an idea that we shouldn't continue building something new. We should reuse something that we already have. But uh, the ruination of Ukraine uh, brings us to the idea that we do need to renovate the houses that uh, we already have. We have conducted uh, some research and we can say that around Half of all the households in Ukraine are presented by uh, mass Soviet housing. This, these houses uh, have not been renovated since their constructions in the uh, 1950s, 60s of the previous century. And uh, even before the war, they were already in dilapidating, in the dilapidating state. Before the war, there was an idea to uh, demolish all the Khrushchevkas. Uh, and today we see it on the news that uh, in Kyiv and in Kharkiv, uh, Khrushchevkas that were demolished or uh, damaged uh, during the uh, artillery shelling uh, are being uh, very successfully renovated. When they are being renovated, uh, the uh, overall aesthetics and uh, thermal isolation of these uh, buildings is improved greatly. Also, there is a very successful experience of um, other countries uh, that also have such mass housing challenges, uh, including Germany, uh, the Baltic countries, Israel. And uh, these countries are implementing projects uh, that improve not just the thermal isolation and energy efficiency and aesthetics, but also projects which uh, changed the layouts, the architecture of such houses, uh, like the project presented on this slide uh, that adds added penthouses to a mass um construction uh, building and um, so such uh, buildings um gained new uh, elevators like the example from neustadt germany uh, in israel such houses were equipped with safety uh, shelters of course uh, this is a very urgent matter for ukraine now and another generation of Soviet mass housing, uh, the so-called panel houses, uh, already have better labor layouts. They have elevators, but they have other drawbacks. Uh, the panels are connected in a very deplorable way. And so there is quite a lot of uh, heat loss um, besides, these houses uh, have internal bearing walls, and so this prevents uh, change in the layouts, but we can work with that. One of the uh, most famous examples, uh, international examples of renovation of mass housing comes from Bordeaux, France. Here, uh, Lacaton and Vassal changed uh, the uh, living area of a mass housing building um, with the help of um, adding some space uh, using polycarbonate panels. There is quite a lot of uh, uh, discussion uh, that it is not possible to use such example in Ukraine because Bordeaux is much warmer generally than <laughs> Ukraine where the temperatures can drop to minus 25. Uh, Celsius, but uh, even if such uh, glass galleries, plastic galleries do not work in Ukraine, we must give it a thought. We must develop new typologies to modernize our mass housing. Another very interesting example uh, of structures that are already 
available that can be revitalized. These are rural housing stock. This is rural housing stock in Ukraine. Um, in uh, the late 20th century, there was a huge urbanization surge, bringing 3.8 million people to the cities. Imagine that uh, moving from the countryside to the cities. And as a result of this process, the rural areas um, are left with a lot of abandoned houses, which are not used now by anyone. These houses have a lot of drawbacks, yet they can be renovated uh, and improved with small investment and used by IDPs in need of places of residence. So to renovate these houses, we can use traditional materials, uh, for instance, uh, insulation with straw, straw roofing, etc. Not all people would like to live in the country, but there are some, and this is the process which can be accelerated with national uh, renovation subsidies, um, legal aid, uh, regulating property rights, etc. And uh, I am giving the floor to Miriam again, and we are almost done. Yes, uh, please, um, or thank you. Yes, there's only three uh, slides to follow, um, so you can prepare your questions already. <laughs> yeah, maybe there are already some. So of course, um, we want to conclude what is actually, what is needed um, to introduce circular construction techniques um, to Ukraine. Next slide, please. What could be strategic recommendations? Um, we have, um, of course, I have mentioned already um, a couple of um, stakeholders. So we have heard there are architects, there are investors, um, developers. Um, next slide. Yeah, there are investors and developments, developers, and of course also policymakers because the legal framework is also very relevant when we talk about construction. And um, there was already um, was of course already research done in this field. What is actually needed to to implement um, circular construction uh, thinking and technologies to a country, and um, it was identified that these are actually these key stakeholders. Um, what is also needed is, of course, evidence base. That's why we, we talk always about reference projects. Is this actually possible? Is it, um, is it really um, something which uh, can be done? And um, then this could be um, a base or is a base to develop it further um, in another project. So in, in the, in the com combination between policymakers on the one hand and architects, investors, and, um, and other people from the field in, with, in these kind of, um, in this uh, triangle of, um, of power, let's say, or um, possibilities to, to change things, we, we can develop evidence. Next slide. Um, when we look at the, uh, especially now, not on the policy making part, but we look at the um, the other part, um, we understood that um, there is, uh, it's very relevant to understand how the construction sector in Ukraine is actually, um, um, how is it, um, how is it constituted? And uh, next slide, please. And uh, we um, can say that um, the construction sector is, sector is dominated by the small and middle-sized enterprises, and the small and middle-sized enterprises are known to be more, most flexible, more flexible than the big ones. So this is actually a very high potential in the country. So we have to reach these um, enterprises and to, to find possibilities um, to create evidence. Evidence means pilot projects, we think. Next slide. Next slide, please. And um, so, in addition to what I just said, um, we can also we, we can also say that research and uh, development is a very important aspect. Uh, as, 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 I, uh, as I said, um, research and development is going on internationally. So on the one hand, it would be very important to establish networks and um, collaborations between uh, foreign um, 
companies or experts and Ukrainian, uh, on, the, on the other hand, Ukrainian expertise to kind of um, develop new ways of constructions and new ways of um, or rethinking the traditional uh, ways of, of doing things. And for that, of course, um, Ukrainian NGOs are also very important. NGOs as we are also, um, Okay, we are in, in an initiative, but I think um, with that, I would just end our um, lecture. And uh, next slide. Um, we would just like to, to thank you. And I would say we just um, listen to, um, to your questions because we are so much over time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both so much. Yeah, so much over time, maybe a little bit, but uh, it's so rich and you had so much to tell that uh, I think nobody is uh, is blaming you to to talk long and, and could even have listened longer. But indeed, it would be good if we go to some questions because there are already four in in the chat, but I take the opportunity since I have the word now to ask you the very first one. Uh, and that uh, is, is uh, connected to the stakeholders that you were mentioning, which are the investors, developers and policy makers. And I was missing uh, the, the fourth one, which are the citizens. Uh, you have been describing at some point that recycling uh, might not have a good uh, um, uh, image in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, and I think it's very important that uh, that image is indeed changed. So I was thinking of uh, campaigning uh, in, in that aspect uh, to get another mindset on recycling uh, would, would be a good option so that actually citizens are going to ask for it. And secondly, uh, that it's also literally, I think, a very good option to self-build specifically in the rural areas of the country where people can actually create things themselves and uh, in terms where capacity uh, is already a problem and will be a huge problem and and i mean with capacity is literally the hands to do the job uh, so that would be my first question i'm mute Okay, uh, maybe first of all, um, I agree, of course, that the bottom up um, approach, let's say, so what you say, like, uh, also addressing the citizens is a very, very important aspect. But I would also say that especially in the construction sector, it is very important also, and uh, you're right that we haven't mentioned that. Uh, the reason maybe why we have not mentioned it is not that we are not thinking that it is relevant, but more that um, it it is such a, um, the construction sector is such a um, big machine, let's say, that um, it is actually important to also, um, to not put all the, um, let's say, um, responsibility to the, the, the individual, but also actually put it on, on, the, on, a, on a higher level, address it also on a high, higher level, because only there we can make systematic changes. This is uh, somehow what, what I have understood from um, working in this field or being interested in the field for, for many, many years now. Of course, I agree that um, evidence is a very important, as I said, is, is such an important uh, point. If you can show that actually building with um, as you say, maybe in the, in the rural areas, we have discussed it actually together with uh, Natasha also many, many times, can we create some manuals um, that people could start to build um, in a simple way, uh, straw panels and then assemble them. Um, can we do maybe even some easy designs? Because I think it's also a relevant point that we, that we also should um, bring in a better way of living, that architecture should not only be a shelter, but it should be actually a place where, which you like and should uh, create um, qualities for the, for, the, for the ones using it. So this would be, would be my answer to your question. 
Definitely. Thanks a lot. Uh, maybe Margot, uh, Volodomy's question. Uh, I would like rather to make a comment here. Uh, before Ukraine adopts the relevant uh, legislation on waste management, all these projects would be really difficult to implement. At present, it is cheaper to uh, dump the waste instead of recycling. I can only make a comment to this comment. Yes, this is uh, really painful to hear. And uh, I agree, there is no uh, control uh, over the waste uh, and all the ecological control um, is being cancelled in Ukraine during this uh, state of war time. And it is a huge problem, but we have what we have. And it is difficult to condemn things that are being done during the war. Um, next question is uh, it's also a bit of a comment. I, I don't completely uh, know, actually, understand the question, but maybe you do. So it's a great overview, but could you comment as to other typologies such as, such as the industrial sector? Um, I don't know if it's meant that the building of the industrial sector, or maybe you understand better. Or maybe the people who ask the questions should elaborate a bit more on it. Any of you? Uh, I, I don't understand this question. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> OK. I can, I can only comment that uh, our research was dedicated uh, uh, so I can make a comment that our um, research for new European biohouse was dedicated to the uh, residential typology, not the typology of industrial objects. So maybe uh, we could uh, come up with some response now, but we haven't researched it. I can continue. We have two questions from Volodymyr. Uh, do the authors of the research, are they familiar with the fact that uh, the um, uh, use of uh, materials uh, in construction is mostly illegal and uh, meaning that uh, the uh, waste construction waste is illegal to be used in the construction. And so, uh, and uh, the second question is, are you familiar with the project uh, implemented by the French in Hostomel, in which they're building the four story housing uh, using construction waste, uh, which is being 40% uh, recycled? First, I think I will answer the second question. Yes, we are familiar with the project. We also know that they are going not only to reuse um, the construction waste, but also they are going to use the natural materials like straw. Uh, this is a very interesting project. We are very happy that it is taking place in Ukraine. Uh, we are planning to uh, learn to take their lessons. Yeah. And as for the first part of the question, whether we know that um, that um, it is illegal. Uh, no, we didn't have this data, and maybe this is true. Maybe this is a problem, but this is the issue concerning corruption, and uh, unfortunately, it is an urgent question during the wartime. So far, it is present, and we will hope it will vanish. Uh, 
Then uh, Orest, who wants uh, you to, to elaborate a little bit more on the wood production. Uh, why did you kind of uh, not dismiss it, but, but say uh, that it might be not such a good factor? Can, do you have more figures there or can you elaborate a little bit on that one? Mm -hmm. I can I can start um, maybe not with the figures, um, um, but um, I. But what I can um, say to this that we are not saying that wood is not a good construction material. We just wanted to make the point that wood is not um, couldn't be the main construction material. Um, this is this is relevant. So wood is, of course, has technical um, and structural um, qualities which are relevant because they are comparable to concrete. And concrete is um, the the material with a very high carbon footprint. So and wood is a, is actually a ca carbon negative uh, material. So it um, it actually um, eats. Um, uh, or kind of it can um, it can uh, store carbon when it is growing so it, it is a good material but it's just not it will not be enough to um, to answer the high amount uh, or the high demand we have in the country clear thanks and maybe to add to this i can To add to, to add to this, um, I can say also in other European countries, the, the price of wood is uh, increasing incredibly. It's like almost double the price than two years ago. And the reason for this is that everybody is now counting on wood. Basically, every architect is now working with wood. And uh, I mean, Switzerland is import, uh, importing or Germany is importing wood from Poland because there's there's no wood in the country. Um, so I think it's a very important uh, aspect to really think of other possibilities. To find alternatives, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, very exciting. Nikita Iswarin uh, is uh, wanting to open hempcrete block production. Uh, so I don't know if you know him already. Uh, if not, then you should connect uh, through this chat or uh, Nikita will, will know how to find uh, you via Roskvit. So please get in contact. Maybe you already have some ideas of examples of uh, community in the, in the EU that could help him or otherwise connect to him later or her. I'm sorry, I don't know. I think we can, um, I would say, uh, please Nikita contact us and we will see um, what kind of connections we can, we can, we can give you. This is what I can say right now. I, I don't have a something in my mind uh, bumping up <laughs> maybe natasha you have natasha maybe так я можу запропонувати щоб нікіта yes i would suggest uh, nikita to uh, visit the site of hempcrete uh, company uh, this company is uh, using um, hemp as construction material in ukraine and they have the technology they are doing franchising and uh, so they uh, give they are given the know-how to improve the quality of the construction materials and they do master classes in building of hemp and lime combination wow that's great where where are they located yeah uh, well they are located in Ukraine, but as far as I know, their uh, CEO uh, visits uh, all sorts of countries, uh, visiting conferences uh, dedicated to hemp as a construction material. I cannot remember quite the uh, specific location and they have several uh, departments in Ukraine. So hempcrete.com, uh, uh, the site, please, uh, visit and you'll find more there. Thanks. Uh, then it was quite obvious that uh, that a lot of things that that you suggested uh, needed action from the central government uh, in terms of change of legislations and in terms of uh, change of laws. And Andreas is asking 
do you already see some change there uh, ahead? Are there, are there plans for it uh, to, to change some of the legislation to make those things possible that, uh, that you suggested, or at least some of them? I can ask, I can answer this in a high Andreas. Nice to, <laughs> nice that you are here. <laughs> but um, I can, I can answer, I can start answering and then uh, maybe Natasha can go on with the details. We understood that um, the, um, that uh, Ukraine is now um, about to become a member of the European Union is really an amazing chance to align regulations with the European Union. And this can be, um, let's say, an impulse from outside, which can help the government um, to, to move faster, let's say. And um, there is already um, some, um, let's say, some first steps um, are, are done to, to align the legislations better. Um, and some uh, some small um, like kind of some norms and regulations were were kind of aligned and should be actually introduced um, already by the beginning of the year. This is what I can say. Maybe Natasha, you have even more um, information. I know we have also talked with some um, some people from the Ukrainian government already. But yes, maybe it's a good moment also to to approach them again with our findings, because it was earlier um, last year, in, in, in autumn last year. Yes, I would like to add that uh, maybe for the national, uh, our national uh, legislation has a long way to go towards Europe, but we can see uh, how the mindset of our uh, um, municipal administrations is changing when they see uh, this demolition, ruination, they understand that when they cannot just throw everything away, they are starting to understand that they need to change their approaches and to practice something new. Mm -hmm. Then one question that could be answered i think quite quickly is uh what is the roadmap for including these considerations into the project and the question is at which phase in the project development should you start considering this at, at like um, circular construction huh? mm -hmm. from the very very beginning i was from the first thought expecting that answer <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Margo, there's a lot of Ukrainian questions, both in the Q&A, but also in the in the chat. Yes. Uh, the question from Roman. Um, what do you think? Uh, how can uh, such buildings built of uh, hemp and uh, and um, straw um, how can they survive the war are they uh, is it possible for them i guess natasha answers any kind of material uh, un unless it is a special uh, concrete uh, used for safety shelters used in israel uh, all sorts of material every kind of material is um, susceptible to uh, war damage that is why we never thought, never designed uh, the scenarios. But uh, in answer to the question, maybe safety rooms would be an answer. Safety rooms built of more sustainable, more, more, more um, uh, resilient materials. And another question from Mikola: Are there any technologies which allow uh, uh, to sort the uh, debris from uh, demolished? Uh, buildings. For instance, in Mariupol, a lot of buildings were simply damped uh, on the landfills. So what do you think? Natasha answers that, uh, of course, this kind of uh, processing is uh, challenging, but it is possible. I have seen a video about a plant in America uh, in which uh, most of such materials is automatically sorted out and the rest is manually sorted out 
uh, on the assembly line. And of course, uh, it requires uh, more effort and more time, true. And we have a few questions in the chat from Mr. Vecheslav. Uh, maybe I have uh, missed it, but the question is, if my investors, colleagues, have uh, several hundreds of euros, uh, several hundreds of thousands of euros, uh, can they invest into the recycling of uh, concrete in Kharkiv region so that uh, it could be used for um, uh, reinforced uh, concrete? Uh, Natasha answers that uh, she doesn't know about uh, such plans of French franchises. Um, we need to take the individual approach to such manufacturing. In general, of course, uh, to add to this, any kind of investment would be um, in the long term uh, a great a great potential for the country because um, the debris um, is or the demolition waste is also it is a resource. And it will be um, a topic for Ukraine in any in any time, uh, 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 let's say at any time, any way at some point. And uh, Lilet, we have uh, the final question in the chat. Can you please uh, uh, read it? Yeah. Um, thank you for the lecture. Uh, it's very interesting and a, and a very big uh, chunk of work you did. Did you find a balance between the choice of reusing materials and the safe construction in terms of safe shelter from the attacks that we have now? I think Natasha just started that answer that uh, it's kind of, do you have something to add to that or maybe Miriam? I mean, we have, I can just say we have this, have discussed this ongoingly during working, during our work on the project. And um, it was, um, of course, it is a big topic. And um, yes, concrete uh, um, construction would provide the best um, shelter for sure. But um, on the other hand, um, this is somehow, maybe this is not like a best match, let's say. Um, of course, that would also say that I would also go for that uh, cross laminated wood maybe has a certain potential to be very um, strong, but um, that's, that's, that's for sure that's a problem. Yeah, this is, um, this is, this is a thing. But on the other hand, uh, maybe this, this means that um, shelters in general have to be um, built in a different way in the long term. I mean, maybe Natasha, you can say about that because you have worked on this other project dealing with the topic, huh? on a, let's say on an urban design scale. Um, no, uh, yes, uh, has a specific designated team dealing with the issues of uh, safety. And this project is still ongoing, but uh, current conclusions are that the missiles that have been launched on us by the Russians cannot be averted and we cannot be protected uh, by, uh, otherwise, but, but we can build shelters under the houses, underground shelters. And we have the last comment from Oris in response to uh, Miriam's and Natalia's um, uh, uh, comments. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was interesting. Your conclusions about timber uh, should be um, more precise. Uh, Ukraine has 2 uh, billion uh, square meters of uh, in storage. And um, the price is falling. 
I'm really very happy with these statistics. While we were doing the research, the engineers uh, specializing in timber construction were telling us that the price for uh, uh, constructions made of engineered wood, uh, CLT or um, uh, glue lamb uh, timber, uh, is uh, one and a half times higher than the price for the uh, concrete construction. But if these um, materials, if timber uh, should drop in price, we would be really happy. At present, Ukraine has only one uh, plant manufacturing CLT panels. If such plants uh, upscale, if we have more, it would be excellent. Uh, thank you very much, dear speakers. Uh, thank you, dear colleagues. On my part, I would like to say that presently, Rosquid, together with new European Bauhaus, is launching its educational uh, program for uh, representatives of municipalities. And one of the uh, topics there will be circulation and participation. And we are starting to popularize circular economy uh, and circular technologies. Uh, the focus will be how we can use such technologies uh, in urban planning. And I believe that this topic will be um, interesting and relevant for our policymakers. If this is of interest for you, uh, there is a link in our chart. This uh, program will be open most, well, we can say for everyone. And Natalia wants to uh, thank all the guests we have had today for your questions, your hearts, and your hands. So thank you for your support. Yeah, no, yeah, we, we only uh, uh, have to, to reverse the gratitude to, to the both of you. First of all, for your research, uh, which is fantastic, and, and also for bringing it uh, to us tonight. Indeed, uh, highly recommend uh, to to follow those uh, the, the course that Marco was just announcing, but also uh, please spread it in your network. So if you know other people who might be interested or you think it would be good to know or you have uh, sites where you can spread it, please do so. Uh, because indeed we need a lot of policymakers to uh, to implement this kind of thinking. Uh, I would finally would like to uh, point out the next lecture, the last one in this series of the, the new European Bauhaus researches, researches the last one for now, um, which is uh, indeed uh, the 2nd of March, you have it here on the screen, Natalia Mizak and Philip Moiser on uh, IDP homes towards new housing systems. So uh, see you then, but maybe earlier already. And uh, stay tuned, stay in touch. Thank you all so much. Stay safe. And this cycle of lectures uh, conducted by Rosquit is supported by the International Renaissance Foundation. So see you all in one week. Take care.